Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Zantanetti. And on today's Put Your Face in the Torah, we're looking at 109th, the 109th verse of Psalms 119. And so let's just dig in. My life is in my hand daily, yet I do not forget your law. My soul is continually in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. Who said that the Christian doesn't have a responsibility? Well, we have a responsibility, and it is to take care to be good stewards of what God has put into our hands. And you know what he's put into our hands? He has given us his life that we may walk daily with him and to walk righteously. Well, at times, you know, we put ourselves in situation and on situations and predicaments that do not really glorify nor edify the life of the Christian. That's us. And so we need to really think about the places that we go and the people that we are with and also the things that we do. You see, the Bible is God's way of teaching us how to live a life that is righteous before him. And therefore, we must think carefully about where we go and what we do because the life of the Spirit is that which God gives us freely that we may walk in his righteousness and in his holiness. Well, the Bible tells us in 1 Peter, I love it, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16, it says, Be ye holy because I am holy. Well, you know, God has given us his life in our hands and we must be good stewards of it. It's interesting how the Apostle Paul tells us in Colossians chapter 3, And we're going to go there right now. Colossians chapter 3. And we're looking, uh, I'm going to start at verse 1 because it's very powerful. If then you were raised with Christ, that's past tense, seek those things which are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. That's right now. Be mindful of things above, not on things of the earth. Right now. For you died, past tense, and your life has been hidden with Christ in God. That is also past tense, but it's also in the present tense. And then it says, When Christ, our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed or manifested with him in glory. Now watch this. Therefore, put to death those members which are on the earth. What what members is is he talking about? Well, we know that the body is here and in the flesh, which is the soul. We're going to get into that. He says, therefore, put to death the members which are on the earth. And then he says, fornication, uncleanliness, passion, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And he goes on to name a few other things. Notice that he says, therefore, put to death. He's not saying for the spirit to put to death. He is saying that you have a responsibility as Christians to put to death those things that do not glorify God. So we have a responsibility to put away those things which are not of the spirit of God. And so he says, my soul, which is the Hebrew nefesh. I like that word nefesh. I don't know. It just speaks something very powerful about the soul. It makes me think deeper about the soul. Why? Well, nefesh are three Hebrew letters. And the first letter is the nun, which basically represents a fish or man. In essence, it really talks about Christ the Messiah, the 14th letter being the Passover lamb. But he is the the man. He is the man that came to die for men or women. Uh, But nefesh represents a fish. Now, the fe, which represents the mouth, where we breathe out words, we speak words, and then the shin, which is an interesting letter, the 21st letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And there's a lot to, we're going to discover later on about the shin. We're not there yet, but let me just give you just some basic rules about it. Well, it represents fire. It represents a wall of protection. It represents pressure, such as teeth. It it represents destruction, too, as well as prosperity, depending on which side of the fence you're standing. But when we look at the the letter uh, shin, we see that there are two names of God that are basically come from that shin. And of course, there are many other things, but the two names are Shaddai or Shaddai, which represents unlimited, uh, unlimited supply. But we know we serve um, El Shaddai, which represents God, the God who is more than enough or who's unlimited in his supply. And then there is the name Shalom. Did you know that God's name is also Shalom? 
for he is called the Prince of Peace. He is called, and his name shall be called Prince of Peace. So therefore, he is peace, his name is peace. And having that said, we know that our nefesh is tied with the El Shaddai and the Prince of Peace. Now, what's interesting is that my soul, he says, it's in my hand. My life is in my hand. But the word soul represents the whole person, the body, the breath, and mind of a person, the appetites. It represents the, the life of the creature. It represents the desire of self. So we understand that when God created Adam, Adam became a living soul. So God took he took dust uh, that had mist in it. Of course, it was like clay. And what's interesting is the Bible says that he made he made man, but he actually squeezed that that clay together and molded so it became flesh. Can you imagine that? What an awesome God we serve! Only He can do that. And here we have Adam formed all the organs, the brain, the liver, the the lungs. Everything is in that body formed of the elements of the earth, and here God breathes his breath into the nostrils of, of, of Adam, and he puts his breath somewhere because the Bible says that the creature, the life of the creature is in the blood. So God breathed his breath of life into the blood of Adam. Thus, we have life in our blood. We know that because we can actually give someone a blood transfusion uh, because there's life in the blood. Even when you take it out, there is life in the blood. And it's very interesting that we can create a lot of things, but you cannot create blood. Because where would you get the life you, you, to, to put it in? There is no place to do that. Only God can do that. So here he says, my whole person, my life, my breath, my desire, my appetite is continually. Now, let's look at the word continue because it's a simple word. But remember, when we're looking at the Hebrew letters, we're looking at the meaning of words through the letters. So a lot of people we study, I did for many years, I look up the Strong's Concordance, the word means this, but as I began to look at the Hebrew letters and understand what they mean, it took on a whole different uh, aspect of the word and how the words are put together because of these life-giving letters. Well, the, the, the word for continue is tamayid, tamayid, and it's basically our T-A-M-I-Y-D, tamayid. But in the Hebrew, of course, the, 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 the tav represents a monument, a sign. For example, a sign we see, as a matter of fact, this letter has a picture. All the letters have a picture, and the picture of the tav is basically two sticks in the form of a cross kind of gives you an idea of what it's talking about we know that the the hill on calvary where jesus died is a beautiful monument for us it's a sign of what took place there he took our place and he gave us life and the bible says that he who was rich he left he left the riches of heaven and became poor that we through his riches may through, through, excuse me that we through his poverty may become rich so he took our life on the cross and gave us life. He took our sins on the cross and gave us life. And so therefore, we know that we have a monument. The next letter is a mem, which is actually is interesting. It is open. And you say, why is it open? Well, because it flows. There's a water that flows through that. And then there is the, the, the yud, which represents ah, the hand of power. And we know whose hand that is. And then we have the dalet, which represents the door. So when you put this together, it is the monument that flows through a powerful hand and gives us the door. If you went backwards, it still means life. There is the door of the power of, of, of God's hand that flows to the monument, and that is the cross. So here the word continually means to stretch, to, um, to be constantly going, to be regular. So he says here, on a constant basis, my soul, my whole person is in your hand. It is continually. Now watch this. He says, it is in your hand. Now what does the word hand represent here? Well, there is a picture of the hand, and it represents the hand that is closed and the mouth. Hmm. Something like putting your hand over your mouth. So here again we have the calf, and it means the hollow hand or the palm it naturally could be of an animal, it could be of, of, of a human, but it's basically the handle of a boat. You ever seen the handle of a boat? And so here we see that there are 
uh, the, the palm is connected to the mouth here. And so we see that he says, it's in my hand, but what's in my hand speaks of what's in my life. You know, if you're holding something in your hand, let's say you see a person holding drugs in their hands, then you know that if they're into drugs, then that hand is connected to their life. And so he says here, I put my life into your hands. And obviously something was going on with the psalmist here because he was in danger. As a matter of fact, it says this, my soul is continually in my hand. And here's just a small commentary. It says the Septuagint renders this, my soul is always in thy hands. But the Hebrew will not admit of this construction. The idea in the original is that his soul, his life, was always in jeopardy. And so although God has our life in his hands, there are times that we do things that put our lives in jeopardy because we're not using, we're not using wisdom. And yet he says, that life is in my hands, but he's trusting God for something, and we're going to see why. Because he says, yet I do not forget. And this basically in the Hebrew means to be without nothing, such as nothing. In other words, there is nothing that I allow in my life, even though I'm going through, to make me forget something. Now, what does it mean here? It means to be without the word law. In the Hebrew are three Hebrew letters. It is the lament, which represents the the teacher, the master teacher, it's a staff, actually. It's a shepherd's staff. And the Vav, which comes next, is connected to the Aleph, which is which represents the name of God. Mm. Aleph represents the name of God because its value number is Gemetria, actually represents 26. And when you spell the name of Yahweh in Hebrew, it comes out to the value of 26. So we see that the Aleph represents a strong leader. But it's a picture of an ox. And an ox is a strong animal. And so therefore, when, when they were teaching, even before these letters really came to be what it is, they taught by pictures. That's why even today you find in, in caves pictures that uh, have been drawn on the walls and in rocks which tell the story. And so here an ox is, is presented. Now in these three letters, if you were to look at it, you would see a teacher, the picture of a teacher or a staff. You would see a connection and it's to a ox, an ox. So we see here when he says that it's continually in my hand, it is speaking in reference to that I have put myself into your hands, but I also have a responsibility because my life is in my own hands. Be careful how people say, well, you know, he took his life by his own hand. You can do that. We have freedom of choice. It's like fear. There are many levels of fear. We have the fear of God, which is reverence. We have the fear of putting our hands in the fire to, to hurt ourselves. And then we have fear that is just terror fear. We may, we may be uh, fearful of uh, crossing a bridge or high places. So fear works in different levels, just like we understand that God is the God of our life. But we also have resp a responsibility to keep our life safe. And he says, I will not forget your law. Now, the word law here is the Torah, and the Torah represents water. It represents a straight arrow. Remember what the apostle said in Romans chapter 3, verse 23? He says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That simply means that every person that is on the earth has fallen short of the glory of God's law. God's law is his glory, and he gave us his law that we may know him. So the picture of the Torah is the picture of a hand reaching out, and it is the picture of a head. So when you combine these two words together, it represents the hand of a man. So God gave us his law. Folks, this is the law right here, the whole thing. This is the gospel, the whole entire thing. All you got to do is look at it, and you see the law of God represented right here, in the word of God, and we see the gospels right here. So when Jesus said, you know, amen and amen, he was giving reference to that which is written, but he also knew that the New Testament would one day be written. And so together we have the canonization, which is the books put together, the Bible. The word Bible simply means a book that contains books. Okay, so we can put it that way. So when, when you look at the word Bible, we see that there's two 
Testament in it. We know it's the Old and the New. So as we're studying the Old Testament and what it, what it means in the letters, we can see clearly how it represents the life of Jesus Christ in the New Testament. It means the flowing of water, the Torah, of a river, the throwing of the finger to show a direction, to walk or to live, the, the throwing of an arrow, the throwing down of water into the rain. We see there's so many references to the law of God, the water represents the word of God. Now I want to say I want to share just a few things more with you about having our lives in our hand. You know, the Bible tells us this. It says, uh, do not grieve, do not excuse me, do not grieve the Holy Spirit with whom you have been sealed. Now watch this. I want to go let's just go right there. Let's go to Ephesians and let's go to Ephesians chapter four and let's look at verse 30. And it says again, and I just quoted half it says and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed unto the day of redemption. So the Holy Spirit can be grieved. I want to let you know something. God is never disappointed with his children. I look for the word disappointed and in many ways I could not find it. God is not disappointed. But he can be grieved. God can be sorrowful over sins and over what we do. But it's never in an eternal sorrow. God's mercy is big, but look, we're the ones that cause the grieving by what we do. Our life is in our hands, and so we have to be careful. Now, let's look, for example, the things that, uh, that people put us through, because we know that sometimes being a Christian, mm, it doesn't mean you're always going to have a happy life, a joyful one, yes. Remember, joy is different from the word happy. Joy is the condition of who you are and what you have inside of you. Basically, the Spirit of God, the joy of the Lord is your strength. We see that in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 10, that they should rejoice because the joy of the Lord is our strength. But happy happiness has to do with what happens in our life. So even if nothing, we say, good is happening in our life, we can still be joyful over the fact that we belong to God and that his word is given to us that we might continue in whatever God wants us to do. But at times, there are times that we go through trials and tribulation because, watch this, it's just the way of the Christian. It says this about Paul and Barnabas in Iconium. It says, And it happened in Iconium, they both went together into the synagogue of the Jews and spoke. So as a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the nations and made them evil-hearted against the brothers. Therefore, they stayed a long time. <laughs> he figured when they're going through trials, they run. They stayed a long time speaking boldly in the Lord, who bore witness to the word of his grace, giving miracles and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided. And part, listen, and part held with the Jews and part held with the apostles. And when there was an assault made by both the nations and the Jews with their rulers in order to insult and to stone them, they were aware of it. And now watch this. They fled to Lystria and Derby and the city of Laconia and to the country around them. And there they were preaching the gospel. You see, we have to use wisdom. They, you, you saw what they did here. At first, they didn't see the danger because there was no danger present, although there was hostility and there was anger. Yet, they stood, along, they stood longer preaching the gospel to win as many as they can. But as soon as they learned that there was danger and they were going to kill them, they got up and they fled. You see, they took their life in their hands and they fled. It was not their time to die. And what's interesting is that when we're walking with the Lord, we have to use wisdom so that we do not become a stumbling block to others, but we ourselves have to be careful because God doesn't want us to put ourselves in danger that we don't need to be in. And so here, going back to the Psalms 119, what he was saying, he said, my soul is continually in my hand. He says, I have a responsibility. And even when I mess up or I fall, he says, I do not forget your law. No matter what you go through in this life, no matter how many times you fall, don't forget the law of God because God has you in check. Have a wonderful, spirit-filled day. And remember, you are in the hand of the Lord and your life also is in your hand. Take care that you do God's will to the utmost. God bless. 